The market has been on a downward turn recently and it just seems to be continuing that way. So the question that many, many investors have is, is now a good time to invest? Or should I wait for the market to get right to the bottom before I invest? And it's these questions that we're going to be tackling in today's video. And I'm gonna be sharing some really interesting research which will hopefully help you decide when to invest your hard earned money. As an investor, your goal is to make as much money from your assets as you possibly can. Clearly, if you pay £5 for a stock and then you go on to sell that stock at £10, you've made yourself a 50% profit. But if you can pay £4 for that stock instead, you've increased your profits. Simple stuff. And this makes it obvious that you should always try to pay the lowest amount for something because that way then you can increase your profit margin. Let's look at the S&P 500 over the last five years. If you bought in here, you would have paid a lower price and therefore made more money than if you bought in here. This is buying when there's a sale on. Prices look good, so you want to grab it whilst it's hot. Makes sense. And it's always a good idea to buy something when it's on sale that you would be buying anyway. Why not get a good deal if you can? But I think there is a real fine line here between getting yourself a good deal and desperately trying to time the market. And it's also great looking back retrospectively and saying, well, here would have been a great time to buy, but it's such a different experience when you're living in that moment. There are a lot of psychological factors that come into play. You hear bad things everywhere about how the market is really crashing and how there's going to be a recession and you start to worry that this time is going to be different. And perhaps you shouldn't buy in now because you may lose all of your money. And if you look at the charts and figures, you'll see that the S&P 500 has been sharply declining and it's actually experiencing one of the worst performances year to date for a long time since about 2008 actually. And of course we do have the rest of the year to make up for that, but no one really knows if that's even gonna happen. I think it's really hard to look at the long-term benefits of investing during a market crash because our brains are wired to actually look at the short-term risk versus reward. And we struggle to see the benefit of our money in 20 or 30 years time. And instead it's easier for us to focus on the upset of seeing our money decline momentarily now before it then recovers. So of course, it's no surprise that people are worrying and asking themselves these questions. When the markets are doing well and you see green and upward trends and everyone sharing how much return they've had on their portfolio, you begin getting FOMO and you really just wanna jump in and start investing. But when you start seeing red, you start seeing the market go down and people aren't sharing how much money they've made, you start to worry and you kind of want to wait until that market starts looking a little bit healthier and is beginning to recover. It's kind of a way that we try and sense check whether this time is a real market crash different to all them other times. And no one really knows what the market's gonna do from here. It could go down more, it could go up, it could just stay stable, no one knows. Of course we can make predictions, but even the specialists who do this all day, every day, make mistakes. So can we really trust our predictions? Probably not. You can probably be quite safe to predict that the market is going to go up over the next 50 to 100 years. But on a short term basis, so perhaps the next six months to two years, we can't really predict with any certainty. And for this reason, trying to time the market is just not a great strategy. This can be backed up by an interesting study that was actually ran just last year in 2021. Charles Schwab compared five different investing styles of long-term investors. Each of these investors received $2,000 at the beginning of every single year for 20 years ending in 2020. Person one had the perfect market timing. They invested $2,000 once a year and they always managed to get that in at the lowest price. Person two invested $2,000 per year on the first day of trading. So they didn't try to time the market at all. Person three divided their $2,000 into 12 pieces and invested at the beginning of every single month. So they followed the dollar cost averaging strategy. Person four did the opposite of person one and they were really unlucky and ended up investing $2,000 at the highest point every single year. And person five said, see you later investing, I'm gonna keep my money in cash and made no investments. The important findings of this study were, if you can time the market perfectly, then you will have the highest return. However, pretty much impossible. And number two, the return of just lump sum investing or dollar cost averaging and not trying to time the market follows closely behind. 
And remember, time in the market is so hard to do. And this study is based on someone hypothetically managing to perfectly time the market year on year over 20 years, which I reckon is literally impossible. I think the thing to think about here is whether it's better to try and time the market and missing that bottom and ending up investing at a very high point or just not bothering with the stress at all and just going with like a dollar cost average in strategy. I also think this study really points out how holding your money in cash as opposed to investing is not such a great idea. The conclusion from this study is that although you come out ahead with perfect timing, no one has perfect timing. Therefore, the best idea for pretty much all investors is just to invest immediately or dollar cost average. Let's now do a back test using the S&P 500, specifically VUSA, which is Vanguard's S&P 500 tracker. And we'll look at some possible scenarios. Here is the last five years performance of the S&P 500. Okay, bear with me. So we're obviously looking back at this data, but let's pretend we're actually experiencing this live and we don't know what the market is going to do. Let's say right now we're here just before the dip and we start seeing the market going down and everyone's saying how bad this is, blah, blah, blah. We start thinking one of two things. One, I don't think I should invest here because this doesn't look good. Or two, you're not panicking, which is good, but you are thinking, oh, this could be good. I'm in sale territory here. And if I'm smart about this, I'm going to get a great deal and make lots of money. So going back to not thinking you should invest because it doesn't look good. Remember, you are a buyer in most of your investing journey throughout your life. You're buying into the market rather than selling, which you'll do later on in your life and your investing journey. And what do all buyers want? a bargain. Try to see the bigger zoomed out picture. The market will recover and it will bloom. This is of course if you're investing in a S&P 500 tracker or a global index. I can't really talk for individual stocks. If the markets were never ever to recover and they just kept going down and crashing more and more and more till they reached zero, we would have such bigger things to worry about in this world. So what I would suggest is if you're worried about investing during a market crash or a market dip, then look at a chart, look at the S&P 500, zoom right out from it and then circle every single time that the market has had a massive crash, a big dip. And then you'll see that it's actually gone on to recover and better. So let's say you're going to buy one share of VUSA. If you timed the market perfectly and you bought in at the dip here, you'd have got one share for 38 pound 58 P. If you saw that the price was falling and you thought this could be a good opportunity, but I'm not here to try and time the market. So you just bought in at that point you would have paid about 43 pound. If you tried to time the bottom of the market, but you missed it and you bought as the price was starting to rise again, you would have paid about 43 pound. If you freaked out and bought after the dip because you had FOMO, 48 pound. And of course you could have just stuck to your normal pound dollar cost averaging as well. The chance of timing the market perfectly is so small because it literally just happens within one day, within a really short time period. It could even hit its lowest within the hour and you could just miss it so easily because you'll constantly be watching and you'll be thinking, ah, is it gonna go lower? Should I hold out here? Or is it gonna go higher? Ah, I don't know what to do. So it's actually more likely that you'll just end up buying on the way down or the way up rather than getting it on the dip. Let's say you sold today, which is the 1st of June when I'm filming this video. One share of VUSA would be 62 pound 27 P, which means that if you managed to time it perfectly, you would have got a gain of 61.4%, if you got in on the way down, about 44%, on the way up, about 44%, and if you miss the dip altogether, about 30%. I think this shows you that if there's a market dip and there's an opportunity there, then by all means take that opportunity and buy in. But there's probably no point in trying to desperately time the market because you don't really see too much of a return on doing that unless you're literally perfect, which is so, so hard to do. So you may as well just buy in when you notice an opportunity or set a limit order even. Realistically, what difference is it going to make if you paid £55 per share or £60 per share when you look back in 20 or 30 years time? Especially if you're going to be investing for a really long time and you're going to be investing at lots of different time points during your life. So with all that being said, my point here is that if you want to invest in something that you have a really strong conviction for, then there's probably no point trying to time the market because it's gonna give you loads of unnecessary stress and you're probably going to fail anyway. So either just buy in when you can as a lump sum investment, dollar cost average, or just buy at the first point that you see an opportunity.